everybody this is dear mama Sal, and it is a beautiful Monday morning the temperature is 12 degrees here in southern BC which would make it 54 if you were in Washington State or the north of it anyway uh, what a great weekend we had wonderful weather and I don't know if you can see I'm actually sunburned on my nose and on my body uh, and that was from sitting out and chatting over lunch um, I had a wonderful Mother's Day and I'll talk a bit about that but one of the things that happened was for those of you who know Dougie, Dougie came to visit and um, it was wonderful because we sat out and chatted and <laughs> boy I can really and feel it in my body. Uh, who knew that the UV was up that high? It certainly felt like a pleasant day. It didn't feel like a day that would burn you as badly as it did. But anyway, I don't get burnt very often in the year, so that's okay. <laughs> um, and when I think about what I used to do to my body when I was in Africa, yeah, seriously. <laughs> I have been so fortunate um, because, you know, in my 20s, I <laughs> burnt my body to a crisp. And so I look at it and I go, I have no idea how I ended up with, um, you know, good skin because it sure isn't because I put stuff on it every night, as you know. Well, hi, everybody. Um, I'm just not quite sure what's happening to my camera and I'm hoping that this is working. Uh, every time I think my camera is charged it seems to be dying on me so I will charge it again at work. Um, I've taken a whole lot of stuff off it so it's not that it's over full so for some reason it's having a little moment and let's be honest it works really hard so uh, we can forgive it almost anything, right? <laughs> so now I'm trying with my cell phone to see if that works. And uh, it might not work the same way, but it's, let's see whether it does work at all. I have to say, though, that it was a really good Mother's Day weekend. Hang on a second, I just want to secure this. Yeah, it was a really good Mother's Day weekend. I had a wonderful time. Um, first of all, the number of people that wrote to me was amazing. And for all of you who did, thank you so much. How incredibly kind of you. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not used to getting, <laughs> getting that many people write to me on Mother's Day. So it was very, very thoughtful, very kind and generous. and. Uh, it warmed my heart and I just need you to know that. You know, it's funny because um, some of you will remember Cisco from uh, him coming to take me out to lunch and uh, round about Easter. And he phoned me from an airport somewhere. <laughs> you never know. He's always on at an airport somewhere. Anyway, but he found me from some airport, and the reason, because I, I, I remember hearing him say, well, I'm just get, getting on a plane, and I didn't hear where. You know, it was just, I, the important part of the message was Happy Mother's Day, so that's what I concentrated on. Um, and <laughs> so I thought, you know, that young man is just incredible. He's so good like that. And then, you know, Dougie came, and for those of you who heard this, might have been on the broadcast and didn't hear the end of the story, when he phoned me and told me he was coming to visit for Mother's Day, or at least for a few hours, I asked him, you know, that's great, what would you like to eat for lunch? And um, he said grilled cheese. 
I'm just watching the guy behind me who I think is texting while he drives and that's extremely dangerous for me. Um, anyway, so he said that what he wanted was grilled cheese. Well, you know, Dougie's a meat and potatoes guy. I've known that from the day I met him. <laughs> so what I did um, was actually make him roast beef. And it was really cute. I have to say it was really cute because he arrived and I had my back to the roast beef. It was fun. We thought we had a really nice meal. Really enjoyed it. One thing I love about um, the visits from Dougie, Doug, Dougie is a, a discussion person. You know, whenever he comes to visit, we have some really in-depth discussions about things. And uh, we got into a big discussion about family. And as some of you know, you know, I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional family in many ways, uh, but very, very privileged family in, in others. So I'm aware of both sides of that. Um, and then Dougie, you know, his parents grew up. Um, you know, literally in mud huts with um, no electricity. And a lot of his family back in Kenya still live like that. Um, and yet they were very, very happy people and still are. And his mother's generation, you know, moved away um, from there and went to the big city to go and earn money. And then, you know, I was saying that the way that they live in Kenya today is you know, considered to be very affluent. It might not be perceived as very affluent on some scales, but it is very affluent the way in which his parents live. And so, but what we were talking about was how we look after our generations. And I, there's no doubt in my mind at all that the Asian population looks after their elders, um, as do certain other populations around the world, um, and Africans as well, um, really look after their elders. You know, <laughs> when, you, when you get too old to look after yourself, they, they don't ship you out to some home and go, well, there you go, we'll visit you on high days and holidays. Um, no, they they have you as part of the family and you get to end your days um, as peacefully and as happily as possible. So we, we were discussing that at, at some length and of course that becomes more relevant to me as I get on at an age. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of the things that we had said was this week would be our week to talk about being happy. And happy is not something that somebody else brings to you. You may think that the only times you are happy is when somebody does something nice for you. And if that is your reality, then I am very sad for you because you're going to live a very sad life. You see, happiness is what you make of each day. It is not what somebody else brings to you. It's what you bring to the world. And in a continuation of how do you heal a broken heart, one of the ways that you get to heal it is to realize that it is your responsibility, not somebody else's. It's not a case of, well, I'll hang around now until somebody comes along who can make me happy again. 
You see, the person who needs to make you happy is the person inside your skin, not inside somebody else's. And so it's a difficult lesson to learn. But funnily enough, it was a discussion that even Doug and I had sitting out on the deck in the sun. Because what he said was that he felt great pressure in his 20s, you know, to get married and have children. And life happened to him and he didn't end up doing that. And here he is now in his 30s and he said it's totally different. He doesn't feel that pressure anymore. He feels that really his job in life is to be happy with what he has. And if somebody comes along to share that with him, that's great. But it's not a necessity anymore. And what really Doug is telling me is that he's found himself. Right? He doesn't need somebody else to make him happy. He's learned how to do that for himself. And he's got good friends. And he's got... people who love him in his life. And I just think that that is the greatest gift you can give anybody. And I, as I've said, you know, if I look at Benji and Judy, and contrary to what you may see on the occasional video, I see two happy people. You know, two people that regardless of what's going on, and believe you me, they are under incredible pressures um, on a daily basis with, with the life that they have uh, chosen. But you know, what I see really, for the most part, is two very happy people. And that is delightful to see. So what makes you happy? What I thought we would do this week, and I need the help of of all the Dear Mama Sal peeps to do this, I wondered whether we could keep a record of what makes you happy. In other words, as you go through your day and you find yourself smiling, you know, at a, at a spring flower or um, two people holding hands or, you know what I mean, whatever it is that makes you smile during the day and makes you feel good, I wondered whether you could sort of feed that back uh, maybe on the comments on this video just so we can keep it all together but just basically what I'm looking for is for us to keep a sort of journal of a week of happiness because I don't think we concentrate enough on that we actually are happier in our days than we think we are I personally am pretty darn happy in the mornings when I find out I'm breathing <laughs> you know um, that makes me happy I feel very happy That, that when my um, cell phone died, for example, <laughs> that I had, um, sorry, when my camera died, that I had a cell phone that I could start recording with. So, you know, this, I, I find, I don't know, there's so many things in my day that I'm really happy for. I would have been happier if I'd remembered to put gas in my car, apparently. Hmm. <laughs> I just seen that. <laughs> I'm just going, okay, so I'm running on fumes at the moment, or will be. And I don't have time to actually fill up with gas before I get to work. So it makes me very happy to think that I might get there. So I really believe that it would be a wonderful experiment to see the sort of things that people write about and tell us that make, you know, things that have made them happy. Because I think you'll find that it's different things for different people. I don't think, you know, that these are the 14 things that make, that make you happy. I, I don't think so. I think everybody has their own interpretation.